Okay, I think we can get started. Um, <laughs> welcome to the last session of the day, um, brave people. Last session of the event, actually. Um, my name is Georg Kunz. I'm working for Ericsson, and I'm active in OpenEV in the testing community. And in this particular talk, I'd like to talk about the OpenEV testing community, about the OpenEV testing ecosystem, to kind of make all of you aware of what we have built in OpenEV over the last three to four years, um, and advertise it and encourage that you take a look at this if you are looking for fairly, um, well, complex, not complex, fairly um, yeah, evolved testing tools. Um, so, Emma also did a huge part in this, uh, preparing this presentation, um, Emma Foley from Intel, but in general this whole presentation is like a joint effort of the OpenEV testing community, so I'm just here presenting it, but um, the entire testing community contributed to this, of course. So um, in general, I have two goals for this presentation. The first one being, um, as I mentioned already, I'd like to create awareness of this fairly evolved set of test tools that exist in OpenEV. Uh, but outside of the OpenEV domain or the OpenEV community. Why is that? Um, well, I, I'm attending OpenStack and related events for some time and it happened to me actually fairly often. Um, like when I join discussions about testing tools, talk, discussions about um, dis how to implement, let's say, resilience tests for OpenStack. And I mentioned, hey, we have some tools in OpenEV, Yardstick, for instance, um, which implement some resilience tests. Did you, did you look at that? And then I got his feedback, no, well, we didn't really look at that. Um, we do know that it exists, but it's being developed in OPNV, so it's this weird telco NFV domain, and I didn't really want to look at that. Um, and I think that's, um, that's a little unfortunate. So I think that despite OPNV having like a focus on NFV, the test tools, most of the test tools, and most of the test cases that we developed and the methodology around this is actually valuable for um, <laughs> for everybody. So even if you're not working on Taiko clouds, using these tools should have a, a fairly significant value for everybody who's uh, operating any kind of cloud. So from that perspective, the, the target audience here is really users who are, well, outside of the OpenEV domain or Taiko users who have not yet joined OpenEV. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the OpenEV community spent three to four years building these tools, so there, is, there has been significant effort put into those, and I, I guess we should just leverage those across communities. And then the second goal of this presentation is to ideally trigger a discussion on how to evolve those tools um, in order to enable them to address emerging use cases. So when OpenEV set out, Four years ago, the um, world basically was, you had your, your data center, OpenStack deployment, and now new uh, use cases emerge like edge computing, cloud native computing, and this has certainly some impact on uh, what the tools need to do, how you can use the tools, how you should be able to use the tools, and um, we have some very initial ideas and initial prototypes in that direction. I'd like to briefly show you a little bit what we have uh, in this in this direction. And then, of course, I'm interested in getting uh, also feedback from uh, people outside of the NFV domain, what you think are requirements you would like to see implemented in the tools to address your use cases. So um, since this talk really targets people who have not yet been involved in OpenEV too much, I, of course, need to briefly explain a little bit what OpenEV is doing. And um, maybe oversimplifying a little bit, but um, in a nutshell, OpenEV is an NFV-focused integration and testing project and community. So what we mainly do is um, we build compositions of the entire software stack, which is composed of well-known but diverse um, upstream components, so operating systems, OpenStack, vSwitches, SDN controllers, and different combinations and configurations. Integrate all this feed it through our CI pipeline um, to build deployable artifacts. 
and then deploy those artifacts in our federated lab. So we have different companies have contributed lab resources. We deploy those deployable artifacts using different installers, for instance. And then at the end of the day, we'll run the test tools that I'm going to talk about uh, on these deployed platforms. So while this is basically the, the entire workflow of what OpenV is mainly doing and contributing, in this talk, we're going to focus on the, the testing and a little less on the reporting part, although this is also quite interesting, but um, mostly the testing tool part. When I say we build like a full stack, um, no surprises here, but this basically gives you an overview of um, the, the components we have um, in the project, and they, they get integrated, as I said, in multiple different combinations and configurations. We typically refer to like a, a stack composition as a scenario as in OPNFV. And as you can see, we have the obvious um, yeah, management and orchestration layer, typically OpenStack, but recently also Kubernetes. We can run VNFs, telco applications on top. We have different components targeting compute, hypervisors, storage, Ceph as a backend, and then, of course, being a little bit more network focused, a couple of SDN controllers and a couple of different data plane components. And all of this we run on our distributed community lab uh, infrastructure. And um, yeah, so the different test tools, I'll come back to this figure, the different test tools will focus on different components of this entire stack. And we'll see how that will look like. Now, how are we actually like, what, what does the test ecosystem, as I call it, what does it look like? Um, so there are basically three, three columns here, three big areas. Um, first one on the left-hand side is functional testing. Um, there's basically one project in OpenEV that combines all the functional tests that's called FunkTest. And um, that is a fairly uh, evolved and fairly flexible framework, actually, for hooking in um, yeah, plenty of upstream test tools, like coming from OpenStack, as you can see here, RefStack for the compliance, um, for compliance testing, Tempest, obviously, but also things like um, Rally, Patrol as a plugin. All of these tools you, you know from an OpenStack um, perspective, but it also has more OpenEV-specific test cases in here. Um, where we deploy VNFs, so telco apps, <clears throat> using some orchestrator, and then even run um, application level tests on those things. There are also Kubernetes tests in here. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly wide range of different test frameworks that uh, have been pre-integrated, and that, I guess, is the, the, the core value of most of these tools. All of this has been pre-integrated in FunkTest, and it is fairly easy to run, but this is a property of all of the tools. That's why I'm trying to, to advertise this a little bit more. We have in the middle then, non-functional testing tools that uh, look at or target uh, or aim at um, measuring system performance and system characteristics. Yardstick is a fairly generic tool that has a wide range of, a range, a wide range of different um, tests. Uh, we'll, we will look at uh, all, of, all of those tools in more detail. Bottlenecks is a load generator. Then we have two tools, of course, uh, focusing on um, data plane performance measurements, VSPerf and NFV bench. And there is a tool um, measuring storage performance. And then all of this, at the end of the day, um, feeds into our compliance program, and there's another project called Dovetail that basically takes subparts of those tools and builds a compliance program around this. So we'll take a look at all of those tools in a little bit more detail. This was kind of the high-level overview. So FunkTest. Um, I mentioned already that it is a fairly flexible framework that is actually built around um, an internal framework called cross-testing. Um, that allows to, to hook in basically different um, test well, components and describe how to call those and like make them run. Um, we have, uh, let's go here maybe. It focuses, as, as you can see here, it focuses on um, the API level layer of 
well, either your OpenStack or your Kubernetes deployment, and it basically treats the system underneath as a black box, so it basically just talks to the API, obviously. Um, we use it in OpenFV basically all across our CI pipeline across different stages um, from patch set verification to gating the OpenFV release. And in order to support that, um, Functest has different test tiers defined. So um, starting with health check, which is like simple health, a set of simple health check tests that uh, eventually for test that APIs are accessible um, and you can spin up a single VM and stuff like this, just to make sure that a system that has just been deployed onto one of our labs actually supports the, the bare minimum of functionality. If the deployment failed for some reason, if you can't spin up a single VM, then it doesn't make sense to run the more evolved tests, obviously. Um, so for that purpose, there are different tiers defined. Um, being a functional test tool, the, the reported metrics are, of course, fairly simple in the sense that it's a, either a pass or a fail. Um, and that's the important thing for most of these test tools. Um, it has been pre-integrated. So it's really a simple artifact or simple to use artifact in the sense that um, Functest is a Docker container or rather a set of different Docker containers. Um, so in order to not um, provide a huge Docker container, <laughs> it has actually been split up according to test tier. So there's a container for the health check part, for the smoke testing part, and for, for instance, VNF testing. You can basically pick and choose what you need, and you can run the corresponding tests using the um, corresponding container. Um, and then, as I said already, it is built for extensibility based on this X testing framework, which by itself is a framework that, a framework that case you would like to build something similar, you could take a look at because it gives you, well, as I said, fairly um, easy to use framework for building your test tools, aiming at also doing this across communities. So this is, of course, mainly a, a test framework uh, used in OPNV, but if you're more interested in, um, like, well, the ONAP community could use this framework as well to host um, their tests, basically, in a fairly generic fashion. Good. Um, yeah, then going forward, Yardstick. Well, moving from the functional test to the non-functional test. As I mentioned, Yardstick is a fairly generic framework that um, includes a wide array of different um, tests, uh, ranging, for instance, from doing performance characteristics in terms of measuring um, networking performance, but also uh, memory performance, um, disk and storage performance, uh, and it includes resilience tests, basically. Um, this is what I was using as an initial example here. So there are uh, a few tests in here that really target uh, the OpenStack control plane um, API resilience. So what those tests are actually doing, they go in, um, basically SSH into your control nodes and start killing services. And then it basically measures uh, if the system comes back within a predefined uh, amount of time. So there are SLAs defined and if the system basically stays accessible and the services recover within a certain amount of time you have basically passed this test. So all of this is already available in, uh, in Yardstick today. So uh, as a one sentence description, it targets at infrastructure verification. It also allows to deploy um, yeah, some simple VNF, so you can also do VNF um, characterization using it. Um, it's being used well, you, you can use it in your CI, obviously, to um, continuously monitor the performance of your um, build artifacts, of course. But you can also use it um, after a deployment, of course, if you have it in your lab or in your production environment. So before you go into production, running performance tests on all those different components uh, allows you to verify that the not just that the system barely works, or actually works, but that it works with the performance that you expect. Right? That's what it's supposed to do. It's also uh, released as a Docker container. Uh, again, oh, sorry, the, the collected metrics are 
performance metrics. I can't list all of them here because it uses a really a wide array of different tools, traffic generators. Then you have, of course, bandwidth latency, jitter, these kind of things, packet drop rates. But then memory latency has its own metrics, right? And storage performance tests have their own metrics. Um, all of those basically get reported actually to a database. And then there is, uh, if you like, also a graphical representation of this. Um, so you're not just measuring, you also store and report the data correspondingly, and you have a visual representation um, so that you can basically identify trends over time. Um, and it is fairly extensible. Um, of course, also, um, there is um, different tests are implemented as different scenarios. So um, this is oh, extensible as, as needed. Moving forward, um, bottlenecks. So as the name already suggests, bottleneck is, bottlenecks is uh, uh, running load tests on your system uh, in order to identify performance bottlenecks. Um, it is actually a staging manager, so to say. So it, is, it, it defines an own set of tests, of course, but it leverages um, other OpenEV test tools. For instance, um, there is a simple test in Yardstick that brings up two VMs and let them ping each other. Now, bottlenecks go, goes in and orchestrates this basically by um, iteratively increasing the number of VMs that get deployed uh, and verifies that all of those parallel heat stack deployments that are actually running in the background, that all of them succeed. If they don't succeed, then this is basically a, a failed test. So um, bottlenecks, as I said, uses different test tools. It uses yardstick, but it also hooks into um, store perf, the storage performance test that a uh, test tool that I will talk about later, and um, it also, as you can see here, focuses mainly on using the, uh, the API of your uh, cloud infrastructure control plane. Um, the reported metrics, pass fail criteria, it also comes as um, or packaged, prepackaged as a Docker container. And yeah, as I mentioned, it is <laughs> extensible, obviously, in the sense that it already makes use of different other test tools that exist in OpenFV. So if you have, like, if you are running a test tool in your private lab already and you think that it might make sense to uh, implement, like, a higher level test methodology that, and you need some, some orchestration to run uh, the test in, for some longer period of time or with different parameterization, this could be a test tool that um, allows you to, to exactly do this. Um, yeah, I've, I think I forgot to mention this. Um, it's low test and it's also long duration test. So it helps you to verify that the system behaves under high load, but also um, running for for some time. So what we typically do, what, what you typically do in a CI pipeline, you deploy your system, you run the tests, and then you tear it down, and the next CI deployment run starts. And this already covers a lot of, of, of area, but um, obviously there are bugs that only appear when the system runs over some well, period of time. So this is also uh, an area addressed by, by bottlenecks. Uh, then moving forward, and this of course is very NFV focused, um, data plane performance measurements. And there are two tools that I'd like to, to mention, VSPerf or vSwitch performance. Um, uh, yeah, it is um, targeting um, measurements of, the, uh, of a particular vSwitch. Could be OVS or uh, another one supported is VPP, um, the, the packet processing uh, component of the FDIO project. And it allows you to set up uh, a system where you have you, this vSwitch or this data plane component, uh, hook in some VMs on top, and then orchestrate using some description, uh, a test, uh, a traffic generator to send certain traffic patterns and traffic flows through your, through your system. So it could be just in and out to the vSwitch, uh, it could be something like uh, PVP, meaning physical into a virtual machine and out again, or even through the vSwitch to one virtual machine to another virtual machine and out again. So different 
different compositions of, of traffic flows um, is, uh, is possible. It's already pre-configured. You, you don't need to worry about this. Um, it uh, is used for, or its main purpose is um, yeah, verifying, it's, it's tuning, <laughs> it's verifying that the data plane component that is being used in your system, may it be OVS or VPP, um, is tuned to the maximum performance, of course. So it does not care about OpenStack in that sense. It really focuses on the vSwitch performance mainly. Um, this is a tool that, to my knowledge, is um, not available as a Docker container yet, but you have the source code available and scripts to build it and to deploy it. And, um, of course, it has not, well, as I mentioned already, there are different traffic patterns that you can program, so those correspond to different tr um, uh, test scenarios, basically. You can extend this um, using the config file, so in that sense, you can also bring in your own um, your composition of uh, VMs, VNFs, and traffic patterns. Uh, in the same category is VNF Bench. Uh, this is slightly different than uh, VSPerf because it is used for measuring system performance during production. So it targets, for instance, a Kubernetes or an OpenStack deployment. Um, so here we basically, this tool basically also orchestrates a traffic generator, T-Rex in this case, um, and it allows you, if you have an OpenStack cloud, to automatically deploy um, a topology consisting of traffic flows across different VMs that get automatically uh, deployed and, and started and then hooked together. Um, so this is basically for monitoring the performance of the full stack, the entire stack, um, not just the data plane components. It doesn't really care if you're using OVS or VPP. That's more something for VSPerf. This is really like what performance do you see in a full stack production deployment. So you can use this to monitor your performance during runtime or during pre-production, again, in order to verify that um, the system behaves as expected. Uh, this also comes as a single self-contained Docker container, so T-Rex, the traffic generator, is already included, and you basically just need to get the Docker container and uh, you can run it then. Finally, StorePerf um, is measuring storage performance. Um, specifically block and ephemeral storage on a VM level. So basically it spins up a VM with um, storage test tools inside, uh, FIO for instance, and it then runs certain traffic patterns, or yeah, load patterns rather, uh, against your storage subsystem. So. Um, uh, this is also, uh, the main uh, use case for this tool is also after deployment of a system in order to um, verify that the system behaves as expected. Uh, but you can also use it in your lab to, or in your CI pipeline obviously, to, um, to verify that um, continuously the, the artifacts that you build uh, provide the performance that you that you'd expect. Um, so um, it also, well, as, as many of the performance characteristic tools it measures the performance um, after some initial um, stabilization phase, and that's also what it reports. So if, for instance, it does not detect that performance actually stabilizes um, after some initial warm-up phase, then this is also, for instance, considered to be a, fa a failed test. Again, it comes as a Docker container, and it has a wide variety of parameters that I couldn't really list on, on the slide. Um, Things like number of VMs you, will, you want to have, queue depth, um, the access pattern, is it random or sequential writing to disk, uh, stuff like that. And this is, again, just to mention this as an example, this is not particularly NFV specific, so uh, I guess everybody who operates a cloud might be interested in what the storage performance of the cloud actually looks like. Good. So. As I mentioned already, um, there is another project called Dovetail. And um, now in OpenFV, given all those um, test tools, um, we have started a compliance program. Um, and the, the, the 
purpose of this compliance program, of course, is to have uh, a test suite that you can run in an automated fashion against uh, commercial deployment, uh, not the OPNV deployments. And if all of the tests basically pass, uh, your commercial platform is compliant in terms of key APIs, behaviors, and characteristics um, to like this abstract reference platform that's being defined through all of the tests that have been selected to be part of the compliance program. Um, as every compliance program, the goal is to simplify, um, for instance, selecting vendors or selecting a commercial solution because you basically, it's, instead of asking a, a lot of detailed questions when reaching out to a vendor, you can basically, hopefully, replace a lot of detailed questions with, um, are you compliant to the OpenEV compliance program? And this would simplify the entire, entire process. But also for vendors, it, it provides the benefit that you have some alignment across uh, the industry in terms of what do you expect as uh, capabilities of, an, well, in this case, NFV cloud in terms of APIs and characteristics. Good. Well, and Dovetail is just the tool, really. We can go to this slide. Dovetail is really just a wrapper around all of those test tools. And the test tools themselves, they do all the heavy lifting, also in terms of uh, integrating tests and maintaining tests and so on. And Dovetail really just picks selected tests, runs the tools, and then collects the test results. So in case you're interested from this entire range of tests we have in the community, the compliance program covers a subset, uh, but all of the other test tools and test frameworks that are not highlighted here, they remain candidates for later releases. So the latest release we have um, was released in September. We call it 2018-09. Um, future releases will include more tests, so we'll aim at increasing the test scope over time, of course. Uh, good. So this basically concluded the, um, the first part of this talk, um, which was mainly aiming at, um, well, giving an overview of the OpenEV test tools and make you aware of that those exist. Now, the second goal, as you might remember, was about, uh, yeah, was kind of triggering a discussion about how we need to evolve what we have in order to address emerging use cases. And I already mentioned it briefly during the introduction. Um, when OpenEV started uh, a couple of years back, um, a typical data center or a typical use case was um, a data center deployment, medium to large scale, um, centralized data center, single data center in that sense. And this data center, of course, having an NV focus in OpenEV, uh, was running VNFs. And VNFs, in that sense, are really just legacy network functions running in VMs, so nothing too fancy. Um, now, in the meantime, of course, things like edge computing and cloud-native computing, you're aware of this, um, have emerged, and this certainly has an impact on what the test tools need to provide and what you would like to test. Um, so the question really is, how do we need to evolve those tools? And this, we have some initial uh, thoughts in the, on this, some initial prototypes, but um, also in the context of this presentation, um, it's also meant to collect requirements and good ideas that we can take back to the um, test community and the test tools to evolve them correspondingly. Uh, in terms of edge computing, of course, there are some fairly obvious um, impacts, but still, they need to be covered somehow in your entire CI pipeline and end-to-end and -end test chain. And um, one obvious thing is the test topology. Now, as I mentioned, typically, we are deploying one single OpenStack instance on a set of servers, and then we run our tests. Well, in an edge computing use case, you not uncommonly, you would like to consider, for instance, a centralized data center and an edge data center or multiple edge data centers, right? Um, so your whole CI pipeline and tooling needs to be able to deploy multiple OpenStack instances and configure them correspondingly to act as maybe a central side or an edge side. And you need to be able to set up the connectivity between those OpenStack instances. Then once you have done this, 
um, there are the obvious networking effects that you need to somehow model, right? So latency on the control plane or data plane, because you might have tests that really check, does the system scale? Does it behave well under uh, loss of connectivity? Things like this. How does it behave when there's just limited bandwidth? Um, or how does jitter or packet drop affect the, the protocols? And um, finally, of course, hardware resources. So um, until now, we are running this on fairly standard um, data center servers. But edge deployments might just have a fraction of the hardware resources that we typically have in a centralized data center. Um, so it's not just the number of servers, but it's also the capabilities of a single server. And that needs to be somehow uh, taken into account when running those test tools. So um, there's one deployment methodology in OPNAV, and that is um, well, referred here as XCI. It's actually a, a CI methodology, but it can also deploy um, OpenStack instances. And um, there's one specific flavor in XCI that basically deploys a single OpenStack in a single VM. Uh, fairly simple, so it's called mini flavor, so it's actually used for debugging purposes, but in the context of, um, of edge computing, um, we can obviously do the following. Well, you have your single um, bare metal server and you run XAI once, you get your controllers and your compute VMs, and then you run it a second time, and obviously now you have two OpenStack instances. Uh, you need to connect them somehow, and then you can run um, tests that we still need to implement in the community that are edge specific. Um, fairly obvious. Um, next step would be um, to emulate or simulate the uh, networking environments you have in this case. So um, one prototype we have is um, doing the following. You have your two VMs and you simply put a VM in between um, so traffic is more or less transparently routed or yeah, directed through this VM. Uh, but this, this red VM in the middle, it has a traffic emulator inside uh, that can add delay, jitter, packet drops, what have you. But all of this is basically, again, it's, it's nothing new, but it needs to be done. And well, the goal of the OpenEV community is to provide this tooling in order to test these systems in edge use cases. So this needs to be implemented, needs to be done. Uh, we have this prototype, but more work is needed. So again, obviously we are also uh, asking for contributors. And if you're interested in that, um, grab me after the presentation. Ah, yeah. Um, and then uh, once we have this network, um, let's say, environment set up, um, there are efforts looking at evaluating um, how, for instance, Keystone as one single use case we basically picked, how a federated Keystone would behave in case of uh, yeah, certain uh, connectivity issues, packet drops, um, jitter, things like that. So this basically covered the, um, the, the early prototypes and challenges mostly in terms of edge computing. Now in terms of cloud native computing, I already mentioned that Functest, of course, has Kubernetes tests included. Um, but we can also apply the cloud native computing paradigms um, to the test tools themselves. So that's a, a nice and interesting idea that I'd like to, um, to show you here as well. Um, typical, well, in, initial slide, I hope, guess you know most of this already. Like, uh, the main paradigm of cloud native computing is that you split up your monolithic app into a microservice, right? And you get your, the basic benefits. Um, you can um, orchestrate this much more easily. You have reuse, you can upgrade and update single components instead of your big monolithic app. Uh, but you can also compose those microservices to create higher level services. And this is now an interesting aspect uh, when looking at the OpenEV test tools. Um, so we have all those tools that I described, and they are already, most of them are containerized already. So um, it does make sense to run them as a workload in, for instance, a Kubernetes environment. So instead of what we do now, basically, more or less just using Docker to run those tools in an automated fashion, but still it's just Docker, we could use Kubernetes to run those in an orchestrated environment 
run them as uh, test tools as a service, for instance, in OpenAV, but also in like your private lab. For instance, from an Ericsson perspective, there's, we, we have a bunch of different test labs, so to say, they, and, and we have different versions of the cloud product deployed to those labs. If you run the test tools like this in a centralized fashion, you can point them to different, um, uh, to specific uh, target uh, deployments and, and run the tests as a service, right? Um, you can also do the following. Um, as you can see here on the slide, you would have, you could use uh, a single a new entry point to uh, orchestrate all those tools from a user perspective. So instead of, for instance, uh, have to, having to learn all the different CLI commands of all of those tools, um, you basically get a single API that is able to orchestrate those tools or to, to trigger the tests inside of those tools correspondingly. And you can even go one step further, like now we are running those tools typically sequentially. So you start with your functional tests and then you have some performance tests. But um, deploying it like this and orchestrating it like this allows you to create higher level tests in the sense that you run your functional tests and a network performance test and a storage performance test at the same time or with a certain pattern applied. So um, this is what we'd like to, um, to uh, yeah, to go to in the community as part of our transition from a uh, more traditional uh, tool chain to applying the cloud native uh, methodology to the artifacts or to the, uh, basically to the test tools we build and deliver to users. Um, exactly. So, in summary, um, of obviously we'd like to um, I'd like to, to, to reach out to you and, and, and convince you to join the, uh, the OpenV community as such. Um, there, is, there are a couple of entry points that might be interesting for you. Um, there is a test working group, um, the group of people that are active in all of those different um, projects uh, and who also contributed to this presentation. We have a wiki page that uh, basically uh, provides more information on this. Um, in general, the OpenAV Wiki is a good place to, uh, to look at. Uh, OpenAV Verified is the compliance program that I was talking about. If you're interested in that, check this one out. Um, as I mentioned, especially with regards to the second part of the presentation, we're really looking for, uh, for input and feedback. What are your requirements and use cases? And if you'd like to, um, reach, to our, uh, reach out to us um, or spe to specific projects, um, there are there's a mailing list, OpenIV users. There's also a mailing list, OpenIV uh, Tech Discuss. You can send requests to, uh, and there are specific um, IRC channels um, per project, uh, and there's even a, a test working group specific channel, so you can basically use that to reach the, the community entirely. Um, yes, so this basically concludes my talk, and I have a couple of minutes left. Are there any questions? Uh, my question may be naive because I'm new to uh, Open NFV, but how Open NFV relates to Etsy? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, some of the test tools. Well, okay. To add, to put it simply, Open NFV is how I see it often a good place to implement for instance, the test specs that Etsy defines on a more theoretical level, right? So there, there are some collaborations ongoing between Etsy and OpenFV. Um, for instance, Etsy hosts plug tests, right? And the, the last plug test that was in uh, June last year, OpenFV and Etsy came together. OpenFV provided some of our test tools uh, and provided some of the OpenFV platforms to be part of the Etsy interoperability testing that is going on uh, on commercial platforms, for instance. Another thing is that um, some of the yardstick test cases that look at network performance, storage performance, and so on and so forth, they are um, based on Etsy test descriptions. Uh, and I guess that does not only apply to funk tests, but I think also uh, VSPerf is uh, 
an NFV bench, they, they, they have, uh, they orient, they, well, how to phrase this, they, um, yeah, <clears throat> they apply test patterns um, corresponding to what Etsy uh, recommends. One more, one more question. Uh, because the testing tools that you mentioned, uh, they are uh, mostly um, testing the, the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about uh, testing uh, the um, concrete uh, VNFs or uh, service chains? Are you elaborating on this, or this is not in scope of your uh, initiative? Yeah, so the main scope, the primary scope of OPNV is indeed the infrastructure. Um, there is ONAP as a project, you might have heard of this. Um, ONAP is an orchestration engine. Um, it's also a project um, that lives in the Linux Foundation networking um, umbrella project, basically. And they focus much more specifically on how to test VNFs and requirements that a VNF needs to fulfill in order to be considered ONAP compliant and in general Taiko compliant. So if you have very specific NV requirements, that's maybe where you want to look at. And they will also come up with a compliance program soon. Um, OpenEV uses VNFs to verify that the platform you run those VNFs on is actually capable to run. It's, those are, of course, sample VNFs, open source VNFs, but still, it should, be, it should give you a good indication that also commercial VNFs are capable, or the platform is capable of running commercial VNFs. Okay. Thank you.